Hi, this is Sandy Minkle. I am with Matt Daniels, and we are introducing the 40 Days of Gratitude. Yes, um, we are. So we uh, were talking with a couple of other people, John White included, about sharing um, about a little adventure uh, that occurred to us here in Massachusetts. I, have, uh, I live in Tennessee, in Nashville. But a good friend of mine, who is also a friend of Luke 10, yeah, pastors a church in a little town of Dedham, Massachusetts. And I've been doing some coaching um, with him and people in leadership. And we had an opportunity to come up here while they are on sabbatical. And uh, one of the things that kind of popped into our mind while we were here was uh, um, the, the importance and the possibility of doing some skill practice around gratitude. People go like, what do you mean skill practice and gratitude? So what we start to realize is a lot of times we think things like appreciation and gratitude are just, um, they are natural and spontaneous things that happen. They're not necessarily things that one can reproduce. And um, it's, like a, it's like a gift, it's like an extra if it comes and it doesn't come to everybody, almost like dessert um, instead of like, you know, meat and potatoes for the main meal. And uh, for all the studying and a lot of different things that, that Tony and I have been doing over the last several years, we've come to see that um, the actual experience, uh, the physiological experience of appreciation becomes a pathway to uh, a, a, a whole new world in terms of emotional resilience and uh, getting back to um, an awareness of where God is and who God is and being able to hear him, being able to make a meaningful connection to others. So um, because it's summer, we also thought well, we want to we want to do something lighthearted because um, there's nothing in the world like making gratitude into something that's really heavy and a struggle. So we decided to make a game. And if you can see this, this is our 40 days of gratitude. Um, and we looked at, we broke it down into three things, which we have here of notice it, capture it, and share it. And so, you know, gratitude, you and I know this um, already. It's that feeling we get in our body when, when we are um, aware and appreciative of having received a gift. Um, it's more than just making a list of our blessings and, you know, counting them as we were told to do, mm -hmm. but it's taking time to meditate on actual instances, actual moments where we have experienced gratitude and uh, mulling those over, paying attention to what we feel in our body, and then um, taking time to put that together in a story where we can share it with somebody else and actually lighten their load. So we set up a whole campaign uh, here in Dedham, and I think that we want to extend the opportunity for people within Luke 10 to do it as well. And so um, we do three things, uh, as I mentioned. We want to notice moments of gratitude. I don't need to show people this. I don't need to notice moments of gratitude. So throughout your day, we want to grab pencil and paper to write down those moments of gratitude, and we've got a little format for that that we're going to highlight. And then we want to find instances to share. So to make this fun, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Do these have to be profound moments? Or no, no. I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked. Um, in, in fact, uh, the subtle ones are the ones that are even harder to miss. But as we start to notice them, um, uh, there's even more. So, um, for instance, uh, the smell of coffee, I mean, for me, is, uh, is a moment where I go, ah, that's really nice. I appreciate the smell of coffee, right? That's it. So this isn't earth shattering. And so the noticing it is just becoming conscious of the fact that, oh yeah, coffee. And uh, then I might think of something simple when I'm trying to actually capture this is um, I sit down and go like, well, how did I actually feel when I smelled coffee? And I take time to make the connection of, oh, wow, I, I relaxed or I, whatever it was, uh, I felt energized. I felt um, you know, I always love having coffee with friends or reminded me of having coffee with friends and I take time to actually write all that down. So we're encouraging people to find things like that every day that they notice, uh, to jot it down and then to actually pay attention to the feelings they feel and the bodily sensations they feel when they experience gratitude, knowing that just like when a person does physical exercise, you know, that people can say, you know, how much time were your muscles under tension? We could say, well, how much time did you have your mind in a state of appreciation? 
knowing that you can actually measure a person's growth and resilience based on how much time they're spending um, in gratitude. So to make it fun, what we did too was we, uh, we invented a little score sheet on the back. So a person could conceivably um, just carry this around with them in a notebook or in a journal and just make a tally mark for every time I uh, noticed and captured a moment of gratitude, every time I shared a moment of gratitude, and every time uh, someone shared and I stopped to listen to it, I could tally mark. And I could conceivably uh, sum up my tallies and know at the end of 40 days, like how many moments of appreciation did I savor? And our little hypothesis, what we did, which was fun, was we started the whole thing off with a survey of life satisfaction. How happy are you currently? How satisfied with life? How grateful are you currently? And are going to give people a chance at the end of the 40 days to look at sort of how much gratitude did I intentionally go after? And then at the end of the 40 days to be able to take that, uh, take that little survey again, it's a little 25 question survey. And at the end of the, the 40 days, take that survey again and, and get a sense of, hey, if I actually did practice this, does that show up in my level of satisfaction? It's not amazingly scientific, um, but it's fun. Why is it important to share it? Because some of us are timid about sharing things. Right, right. And also the sharing is, um, and we, we'll tool like in another video we'll do, we'll actually walk through, you know, what we, what we do and how we share it and what are some principles around sharing it. One of the things that happens is when I notice a story of gratitude and I write it down, so um, I actually, and when I share it, I actually sort of create the movie in my mind. So I'll, I'll explain that for a second. Um, so, you know, when we want to go back and remember something this day, we've either got a photo of it or we've got a, uh, or we've got a video of it, um, before photos and videos, people could write these things down in a book. But if you go back, even before people were writing our video cameras of a long time ago for our brains were our stories. So it, when I remember a story, when I have an experience of gratitude, I, I experience it, um, I have words to describe it. Uh, I have bodily sensations that I feel. Um, I have emotions that I feel. And all of that is kind of scattered throughout different regions of my brain. It, the brain doesn't store it like a movie, like it happened. And so um, I can go through the day and have a moment of appreciation. And if I don't capture it, it just kind of like all those disparate parts of it just float out and they lodge in you know, all sorts of different places in my brain. But when I actually tell the story, um, there's a, the neuroscientists, uh, the geeks have a phrase of what fires together, wires together. So if I go back and I tell someone a story of appreciation, so I give the information, I'm recalling pictures of it in my mind, I'm paying attention to how I felt physically, and I'm paying attention to how I felt emotionally, by telling that story, I actually create it as a movie in my mind. I put all the pieces of it together and it becomes synchronized. And if it was a, it was a, it was a positive uh, feeling, then afterward, if I just merely say, oh, I have an appreciation story about this cup of coffee I drank one day. If I've taken the time to tell that story to others, I can just mention the memory and it all comes back, the feeling content and everything. And the importance of that is because when I'm overwhelmed and when I'm sinking and the whole world looks black to me, um, it is really nice to remember that the black world I'm looking at right now is also just a movie and that I can make choices with what to do with, once I have a, a well-trained brain, I can make choices with what to do with my brain um, and uh, pull out pull out that movie and put another one in its place and approach the situation from a totally different aspect. Like That's a lot. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's fun. And I think the one shortcoming that we have had in doing this as a church, which I'm kind of excited about um, uh, a chance to do this with the type of community we have, Luke 10, is people are already meeting weekly in a group. Um, when you have one large congregational meeting, you can't sit around and have everybody share a gratitude story from the week. Um, but whereas this, when we're doing in groups of two or three or five or six or eight um, in a Zoom call or face-to-face, -face, 
um, people can actually, you know, pull out their tracking sheets in front of each other and they could say, how'd you do this week? And I did good. And you look at each other, you talk to each other, and then you could literally go around the circle and have every single person share an appreciation story. That's great. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, welcome. <laughs>